sure if you saw, but last month our very own Garen Gardner held a webinar with special guests Brooke and Mick from longtime partner PrinterBot. PrinterBot started like many great ideas do in this day and age. Countless hours in a garage and a Kickstarter campaign. And now offers multiple 3D printers that are easy to use and affordable. In the following, you'll see some of the excerpts from that webinar. We'll start by showing you some of the key steps when first unboxing the PrinterBot Simple Metal Printer. All right, so the box arrived. I've already cut the tape. This is the most important part, man. This is what some people throw away and drives me insane, man. Printerbot.com slash simple. That's the only instructions. We don't ship a manual, it's online. So we'll need to go to that address. This comes straight out. There's two handles in here, which is pretty cool. So you got these little handles that you can pull it out. We'll just put it up on the table. And we put it inside a, uh, a bag just so it doesn't get rubbed against the cardboard and hurt the powder coat. All right. Power supply. You got your spool holder here. I'll, I'll get that one. Hello. I'm going to raise the Z a little bit because I got this styrofoam. Bring it in. There it is. There she is. Now we've got right on the back this little guy. It won't go up any further unless you cut that. It's just to hold it together. So it's not banging around in the box. Now we're good. Okay. Here you go. Last thing is there's two little screws here. And we'll put the spool holder on. You'll need a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench to get that on, which is in here. You get two of these. One of these is actually for uh, if you if you need to tighten a coupler or make an adjustment on a small set screw. But this I'll just get snug down. Boom. Come on. There it is. Now I do recommend you order one of these with some filament or, or buy some filament ahead of time. This is for the filament. I've got an example of that here. So here's what we're going to do today. Actually, we're going to print a little plastic piece because if you have this without this plastic piece that we're going to show you, um, this can come over and when this comes up, it hits. See the problem? So one of the cool little upgrades you can print yourself is a little clip that we're going to print here. So that's what we're going to show you. Now this comes, a little sample pack comes, so you could take this out and hang on there, but I had a guy send me a picture, picture yesterday of this and it, he just like pulled on one part of it and he tied it in six knots, you know, and then he just broke it and threw it away. <laughs> so be careful when you're taking that out. But you have a USB uh, plug there, we'll plug in the power. This is just a laptop power supply that's 12 volts. So the power's inside. Where's our power? Do you have to go underneath here? Uh, no, it's right here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you do uh, lose this power supply or something, these are available all over the place. You can get my website too, but if you've got power and a USB cable in the box here, you can hook it to your computer. We'll get to that here in a minute. <laughs> Again, the USB cable's on the side. You can use an SD card to auto print. But to start out with, we got to set this thing up. So since it's on the side here and you got this moving platform, be careful. 
you don't want to pull this over and start breaking things. All right, so I'll, I'll clear all this off. I've got my power. I'm just going to put a piece of tape. We're shipping with this now. You can buy blue tape, but it's kind of nice to put this on. So much easier than messing with blue tape. And just somewhere in the center. Isn't that great? And that is out of the box. And we'll get the software. Excellent. Thanks, Brooke. Um, so from here, what we want to do is model up um, that bracket that Brooke talked about. So the first thing we're going to do is come over and just start out with a new sketch. And I'm just going to, you'll notice that I have my view cube. I can look at the top view and I'm just going to select that top plane that we want to work off of. And I'm going to start off by creating a circle just in the center of my model. And I can turn on that origin plane to see where the center of my model is. And we're going to do a 60 millimeters. You'll notice that um, by default my units were in inches, so I can type in 60 mm. It defaults, or it'll it'll make that dimension 60 millimeters. It'll show me inches here, um, so we can just come over here and switch this document over to metric, so that I can actually work in it in a metric file. Um, I no longer need those origin planes, so we'll turn those off, and I can see my sketch there. We may want to come in and just connect these lines up. So I'm going to do a line straight up to that quadrant over to the right quadrant. Um, and if I wanted, I could come in and trim this out. I don't have to, but I can come and just trim that out. And then we may want to draw a little bit more information in here. I'm going to draw a line straight over and down at an angle. Um, this will allow us to have the bracket snap onto the arm. Um, so that it'll have kind of a nice pressure uh, fit on there. It won't move around a whole lot. So we'll do something like 13.5 uh, millimeters wide and 13.5 high, so the same thing. And then we'll also come in here and say let's do 104 millimeters for the angle. Um, again, I could trim that out if I wanted to. I'm not going to I'm not going to trim it out. I'm going to use my my press pull command, I use this all the time, uh, and you'll see me use it in a couple of different places as we're going through this. Um, but I'm going to extrude that up 25 millimeters and hit OK. So we have the first part of our part, and we want to mirror that over. So we can come in here and say, let's go underneath Create to Mirror, and I'm going to choose that we're going to mirror the body. So that's the second one, because that is a body, and that left face as a plane I want to mirror about. So now you'll see I actually have two bodies if I look in here, and I can turn one on, one off, um, but we want them both there. And I'm going to come in and combine those together. So I just select them both, hit join, and now they're one body. Um, but I do realize that I want to do some work on here, and I don't want to have to do it on both sides. So I have a timeline at the bottom, and I can actually just roll that before that mirror, so now anything I do to this part, when I roll it back forward, it'll be updated to both sides. Um, we're going to create a sketch on the top plane. And we want, uh, we want this to snap onto that little arm um, that the spool sits on. So I'm just going to hover over that, that end point, drag up a little bit. You'll notice it gives me a little green uh, tracker. And we're going to snap to that end point. So now that pretty much just uh, locks straight up and down. I can make it bigger or smaller by dragging it up or down. Um, but in actuality, we just want a dimension on here of, um, I think we're two millimeters. So get a nice little press fit there. And then I'm going to extrude this down. Again, I'm going to do press pull. And I can grab just that piece and pull it down. You'll notice that it's actually adding that to my part. Now if I accidentally grab both of those pieces, you're, you'll notice it's trying to cut material because it knows that there's material going in there. So I'd recommend only picking the one side. If you do pick both sides, you can always just say join instead of cut. And then as you're dragging this down, you can pick that bottom face and it'll snap right to that face. So we have uh, a nice little, nice little circle there to give us a nice tight press fit. Um, now I'm going to grab that edge and hit my press pull command again. And you'll notice now that it's allowing me to drag a fillet. 
um, by by holding down my command or control key I can select the two edges and we'll say that's one millimeter for both of those so with that you'll notice I can now roll end of part marker forward and now I have that on both sides so what I did to one side it updated to both sides now in here we we don't want to use a bunch of material that we don't really need to so kind of a cool little way to do this I'm gonna grab the shell command pick both of those the top and the outer face and we're just gonna put a wall thickness of three millimeters and hit OK and you'll notice that now it shelled out those faces we selected and removed them and gave everything a nice constant wall thickness of three millimeters. Um, to make it a little stronger, this base, um, you may want to make it a little thicker. So you can actually come to press pull, grab that, drag it up and hit one for one millimeter. So now we have a four millimeter base there and a three millimeter uh, everywhere else. So it's kind of a nice way to be able to have different wall thicknesses um, in, in something like the shell command. And then from here, this is kind of a neat one. Uh, I don't really want these two little pieces that, that float out to the side. So I'm going to pick that interface and hit delete on my keyboard. Pick this side, hit delete. You'll notice it automatically heals it and gives me that little part. So that's, uh, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, and then we may want to just add a nice little chamfer on that outer edge. So we can go underneath our modify chamfer grab both of those with the control key and we'll say that's uh, something like I think one millimeter will probably work pretty well just to give us a nice little chamfer on there so there's our part we've been able to start out let's just roll this all the way back and kind of walk through it um, we'll turn on that sketch so I started out with the sketch extruded it up uh, we then created another sketch you don't see right now for that little extrusion um, put fillets in there mirrored it over and joined it did a shell deleted both of those faces oh we extended uh, we extended that face up a millimeter you'll see it get a little bit thicker and then removed both those sides and added a chamfer so pretty simple there um, and then from here, to make it, basically we can just hit our Make tab, do 3D Print. Uh, I have Cura installed, that's the, um, you know, it's the, the, the utility I use quite often, as Brooke had mentioned. So let's just use Cura, I can pick the model, and if I want, I can, I can adjust, uh, you know, the print quality, make some adjustments there. There's some other options if you're familiar with, with these. Oftentimes I just leave them default, uh, do medium. This will launch my uh, this will launch Cura. I can see my my part in here. Um, you'll notice these are all the settings that are default for the printer bot. Um, you know you you can open up the profile that's their default profile and give you all nice settings for PLA. And then from here, if my printer's hooked up, I can just hit print and the way it'll go and it'll print off this model. Well, thanks for watching. I can't end this before showing you the print in process and finished product. Anyway, I hope that in watching this, new printer bot owners can get up and running in record time. Now get designing and make some amazing things. Cheers.